try to be as punctual as, as possible. Um, being at the end of, of several presentations gives you always the advantages to, uh, to, to listen carefully to the previous speakers. And what, I, what, what struck me is that there's a lot of knowledge here in Romania available on different levels, from the insurance sectors, uh, from the regulators, uh, from the EU directives. But everyone, it seems to me, is appearing, is doing his own work. And I would suggest, as we have done in the Netherlands, and I will come later back to on that, combine your forces. There is your knowledge, and there you're able to compete with net cat risk. So that would be my advice to you. C sit together, share your knowledge, and come up with a plan. Because it is not only to do with underwriting, to prepare your risk, that is one element of it, of course. But you also have to take into consideration, looking at your net cat risk, what are the, are the effects of it, and how we can we are able to, to mitigate that risk and able to compete with it. And secondly, and thirdly, of course, once that has happened, giving all our measures, giving the fact that we have ensured that risk, what will be the effect and how can we help restore not only the life of the people, but the business, the communities and the economy. So also on that, look at it from a multidisciplinary approach and not from a single uh, point of direction. So that would be my advice to you all here, uh, given the previous speakers. And I think then if you combine it, you will solve this matter. But that is a, as a first uh, uh, start. Um, yeah, looking at, at the, uh, the, uh, my four points, I will go very briefly into uh, what are different NETCAT events because you're talking here about floods, but of course there's a variety of, of risk events. Um, what is the role and the position of the different stakeholders? Uh, the climate change effect on the insurance industry. And as last, I will present a case study, uh, the flooding in Poland where I've been uh, myself involved and the measures that has been taken but also uh, the effect afterwards. And I would like also to invite, invite uh, the regulators and, and the governments, as you have mentioned already, and the Dutch are known to live with the water. We are not uh, uh, beating the water, but we are working with the water. And from that perspective, uh, there's a lot of w things to gain and to win, and where you are able to live with the, with the water and, and mitigate your, uh, your risk. Okay, if we look at the, uh, the definition of uh, a net cat event, event, a natural catastrophe, uh, ha it has a force of nature and it can have a variety of different uh, elements in it, from hurricanes to flooding to tsunamis uh, and volcanic eruptions and any other geological processes. Um, what is the general trend? It seems to be increasing in only if we look at the last couple of years. Reasons, uh, some uh, scientists uh, say it has to do with climate change. Other ones will say if you look at over 100 years, it's a natural uh, change in, in the environment which we see from a long history once in a while. Um, but we have to deal with it one way or another. Uh, and we look back in 2012, you presented the figures up to 2010. Uh, there were 905 natural catastrophes worldwide. Uh, and the, if you look at the overall cost, and there were more than uh, 150 billion dollars in total, and the insured losses were over 60, 70 billion. So the impact for the industry, not only the insurance industry, but also the econo economical industry, is en enormous. Um, let me see. Yeah, um, this is a tip. One I, I highlighted because that is something you will not, let's say, all very quickly look at it. Huh? We were talking about flooding. Uh, I know that uh, Romania has been uh, um, determined for earthquake risk, uh, and there are several uh, um, uh, risk assessments to look at that. But drought is a, is an, a devastating killer. If you look at the uh, effects that has been, uh, been from the history, then you see that, uh, in, for example, in 1900 in India, uh, there were between uh, 250,000 up to 3.25 uh, million people died of drought, and uh, so that is a situation which can be uh, very uh, uh, devastating. And even in uh, in, in 2011, uh, the state of Texas, the state of Texas in the U.S., uh, there was an emergency declaration for the entire calendar year, and even had uh, the drought caused, of course, also fires around the country, which of course has an enormous uh, impact on that. So drought is an element of a net cat risk which you also have to look into consideration, not only the flooding or the earthquake uh, risk. Uh, 
this is a slide. Well, some of, of the NetCat events, which are, I think, quite, uh, quite common. I think, well, uh, here you see uh, the flooding. I will do so a small test of someone will recognize one of the, the last one. Uh, anyone this one? Which is this? Sorry? Yeah, Hurricane Katrina. Correct. Uh, well, this is, your, you see, a tornado, uh, which is called a rope tornado, because you are also there you have it in different uh, varieties. This is an avalanche on the snow. Uh, this is, any guess? The bird flu, which, of course, is also uh, a net risk, which can has a cross-border existence, but can come and, and being transferred to your country. We now see from the Middle East uh, some uh, emergency risk coming to Europe. We had the first two victims already in hospital in the Netherlands uh, last, uh, last week. And anyone who has recognized of this one? This is a very typical net risk. Uh, you will not see that quite, uh, often, but any guess here? This is, this is a solar risk, a meteor that hit uh, into, into Japan. Uh, in the 1965. So you see, in what I mean with that, in the NETCAT risk, it has several elements. It is not only limited to one, but it has multiple. And going forward in the presentation, we will see also it has uh, cross-cultural and cross-border uh, effects, effects as well. Um, of course, on the, on the flooding, uh, as that was one of the previous uh, uh, elements that was we discussed, of course, the devastating uh, uh, result of that uh, are tremendous. Uh, in China in 1931, between 800,000 and 4 million deaths, uh, uh, as, as the previous speaker said, not only directly affected to the flood, but also the post uh, effects when people try to escape and, and go in small boats or uh, on other tubes and then are being uh, killed by, by the water or any other uh, net cat effect, what, what was in between there. Uh, sorry, uh, an element there is. For the Netherlands, um, at the North Sea flood in 1953, it's almost uh, more than 50 years ago, uh, 2,000 people killed in the Netherlands, which you could say, well, that is quite limited. We look at, for example, in, in China in 1931. Um, the, the flood, the sea flood, was a combination of uh, high tide and uh, southwest wind at the same moment, which is quite exceptional, but it came in, uh, in there. After that, uh, the def that devastating uh, NETCAT event, the Dutch started to build uh, the Delta plans, which has been completed only last year. So it took the Dutch from the south part to the north part, because you know that the west part of the Netherlands is completely surrounded by the water, the North Sea water. It took so more than 50 years to complete the Delta uh, plan. And the Delta plan is a plan how to live and deal with the water. That means if a river can be flooded, it's not only about building higher dikes, eh, because as you mentioned, dikes can break, eh, because they have a certain capacity, certain limitation. But what the Dutch has done is that also certain amount of lands which are not being used, uh, are being used to lead the water when the water gets too high for the dikes and have that water floated somewhere to a lower area. In that way, you save your dikes you save most of the part of the population and you still deal with the water. So that was an example of the total delta plan. And what we have seen now, uh, we'll come back to that to later, is, is in the business case of Poland, that when, the, when Poland was hit in 2010 by uh, the flooding in the southeast part of Warsaw, and after, uh, let's say, the situation was cleared and the discussion started with the, the local and the regional authorities, they said, we don't know how to deal with water. And actually, we don't care. And that, that was about the fact that they have never been hit by such a se severe water. But the awareness and the preparedness after that started. And now they are working with the Dutch uh, government uh, in, in, in to dealing and competing with the water. And I would invite you to work together with the Dutch. There's a na national water plan uh, committee where authorities, scientists, and, and uh, business working all together in helping to, to, and to bring all the resources and plans also to other EU countries. And that is one of the things that currently the Dutch are doing with, with the, Polish, uh, the Polish community. As you saw in, in your overview, uh, the Poland is on the second ranked list if you look at, uh, at the risk and, and the effects on it. So they are now becoming more aware that they have to be prepared for uh, a NETCAT event, in this case, a flooding. Um, of 
course, uh, other elements like uh, uh, tsunamis, and I think one of the previous speakers mentioned that as well, uh, even to the 2011, uh, a tsunami occurred in Fukushima, uh, Japan, uh, nuclear plant, and people think, why should you build a nuclear plant in the north, uh, close to the ocean? Well, it's far away from Tokyo, so we are safe, not giving into consideration that a tsunami can also happen underwater, and that you can have an undersea earthquake uh, in, uh, will have a devastating effect on your energy supplies uh, uh, and, of course, your population. Well, the epidemic outbreak, we already gave some examples, had the H1N1 influenza, the swine flu, but already, already new mutations are coming our way, as I, I explained to you early, earlier, the examples of two people who have been affected in Saudi Arabia only last week and who brought it back and are now in the hospital. Um, some recent events, and uh, we'll come back on that, is that it, um, you will, as you also will see and, and read here, for example, if we look at the, uh, the, the earthquake of the Greek coast uh, only recently, uh, houses were destroyed, shops were destroyed, people went to the hospital, but also it appeared that this Greek earthquake has now also had an impact in Turkey. So there again you can see that a net cat risk you cannot geofence it, that it only will happen in your country, but it can occur someone else, but hit your own country. So also from a risk management perspective, you have to look from risk side out of your borders, because a, a, a risk will not be limited into your borders only. Uh, um, I, I mentioned to you the, the Dutch water uh, problems we, we had also in 2008 in the south part of the Netherlands, which had to do with the enormous amount of snow that melted in the Alps, and came through Germany to the Netherlands, and there it was affected. Germany was not affected, but the Dutch were affected because that was the last part. So the cause has been in Austria because of the enormous amount of snow, but the effect can be in your own country. So um, uh, keep that in mind. Um, some other elements which we can, came more recent events. Uh, also with the aftermath effects of the insurance payout, uh, business are waiting still after the RENA disasters. Um, in the Philippines, uh, farmers received indemnity payments. In Russia, that was, uh, that was the, the flooding of only August 2013. Uh, it has been estimated uh, of 13 billion Russian rubles, which is our close to one, uh, 1 billion euros and are still waiting for uh, the payment uh, to restore the flooding. So also the aftermath, after a risk, if you as a country and as an industry are not prepared, can have enormous impact on the, uh, on the economy. Well, a side effect, of course, is uh, what we saw with the recent uh, flooding events here in the region, eh, like in, in, in Bosnia, uh, probably you have seen that on television, but now also the landmines that were bur buried into the ground starting to flow and causing an enormous extra threat to the people in that area. So you're not only coping with the flood situation there, but now also you have to be careful of landmines that are floating around and gives an extra threat to the environment and could cause an extra number of casualties, not related immediately to the event or caused by the event, but as an extra, extra after element of the, uh, of the um, effect. Uh, I mentioned Turkey, which was the effect of the Greece part. The tr 10 elements, do you know wh wh when they occurred? When this information was published? Not that they occurred that region. Sorry? Not that they occurred that region. No, those were only for the last two days. This is information of the last two days. So this is not something from the past 2013 or 2010. This is 2014, May 2014. And this is just a small overview of what is happening at the moment worldwide. So. Uh, this gives us a top of mind that, it, it, that we have to be urgent on this and that we need to, uh, to take uh, measures. Also there's an element, uh, as the industry, the government are taking all kinds of measures, as we heard before, there is now also a protection for the people by international law, and my na neighbor already mentioned something from the EU directive. And the most important element is there is that the states shall take in accordance with their obligations on the international law, and including international humanitarian law and human rights law, all necessary measures to ensure the protection and safety of persons with disabilities in situation of risk, including occurrence 
of natural disaster. So if you as a government or as an industry are lacking to solve these problems and a net kit situation will appear, your people might turn against you within their hands, protection by international law. And they go to the, in to the, uh, to the international community, the European Commission, they go to the European courts and you will be forced to pay. So in order to wait for this situation, because now they have the law in their hand, the international law, solve the issue together. Um, first conclusion of what, uh, what the introduction uh, has, has mentioned is that NETCAD events exist in many variations with multiple possible effects, as I said, with the landmines that are starting to flow in Bosnia, but also the fact that an uh, earthquake can happen in Greece but has an effect in Turkey as well, so cross-border. Uh, not only life insurance, where we were talking here in, as a household insurance with a mandatory and voluntary scheme, but of course also non-life uh, life insurance can be affected because when there are casualties, also the life insurance market will be affected. Both citizen and, bi and business can of course be affected to have an enormous impact on your economy. Also with the restoration of your economy, bringing it back to, uh, to ec economical welfare uh, uh, can have a tremendous time uh, during uh, many, many years and generations. Long, uh, gonna have a long-term impact and recovery time, and of course, the stakeholders uh, will involved and will be affected. Um, the role of the position of the different shareholders. The people will be affected by a NETCAT event. Are they prepared? We are looking at houses are being built. Uh, are they uh, prepared for the flooding situation or as an earthquake? Uh, are they insured? Uh, here I saw the figures from the first presentation. You will have in the mandatory scheme 450,000 policies and you have 8.5 million houses in Romania. So I think there's a lot of work to do uh, talking about a mandatory scheme uh, and solutions like to incorporate it in your utility bill. I think that is the way of creative thinking to come to a mandatory scheme which uh, affects everyone and everyone pays his contribution according to it, and of course with the deductible, then of course your risk will, from a financial impact, will be manageable. Uh, business co uh, community uh, related, what is your industrial chain risk? If you being affected or one of your suppliers being affected. So it's creating a net cap, cap risk management plan is important of course for the commercial. Uh, brokers could be affected by a net cap themselves. Are they able to give advice to the clients? Are they prepared? Did I give the proper advice to their clients? Um, same accounts, of course, for insurance and reinsurance, but also in, in the private-public partnership, of course, also the government are need to be paired. Conclusion, all stakeholders have to work together. It's a common approach, it's a common interest. Join forces, join your models, join your data, join your info, and then you're able to make a multidisciplinary plan. Um, well, I think the conclusion is also for the uh, insurance industry, uh, the climate change risk has moved to the forefront of the insurance uh, concerns. It cannot be ignored uh, and will need to be adapted. Um, uh, just questions for the market and also for you to take away. Uh, what impact does it have on NETCAT events? What kind of products are needed? Uh, we are talking about several uh, elements, uh, mandatory towards voluntary, or having additional coverage in another product. What can be the financial impact on the different elements? And not only prepare your own plan, but also prepare a plan for your customers, uh, your people and your businesses. Risk mitigations, emergency uh, actions, and recovery actions are needed. As mentioned, I will very briefly uh, uh, discuss that. That is the flooding situation in Poland. Very briefly, very briefly where I've been involved myself. Um, that was in 2010 when uh, the river in, in the uh, southeast part of uh, Warsaw was affected. Uh, over uh, 1,700 acres of fields were contaminated, and more than 100 people were evacuated. And of course, the, the, the market, the industry market was overwhelmed by claims and did not have the capacity to deal with it. And they called external advisors. And uh, I, at that time, I was uh, asked to provide assistance to not only the government, but also to the insurance industry to help them deal with the, with the coverage because they were not prepared. They didn't have a plan because they, as I said, 
we ignore it, the flooding risk, because we never have been evacuated by that. So it is not there. At that time, of course, they had to deal, uh, to deal with that. Um, enormous increase of number of claims per, per carrier. That means that in two days, the whole local market uh, uh, was uh, blocked. There was no external service anymore. Uh, I mentioned that Mr. Uh, Maran in his presentation mentioned about uh, claims management capacity. Well, here there was an enormous problem. Call center capacity was a problem. And then they were looking for external outsourced support. Uh, insured were not traceable, not reachable, not findable. That was an enormous problem. Uh, within two weeks, we had a project team installed with a clear mandate to service the, the, the customers, not only the insurance uh, carriers, but also, also, of course, the insured. And of course, at the end, it was a temporary solution, which took nine months to deal with the first group. After that, uh, there was a vendor management plan uh, installed, a flood risk management plan, which involved claim service providers with SLAs, auditing costs, uh, and all the other elements, which were pa part of the pre-risk plan. Um, as part of this as well, due to the time I cannot go too much of in it. One thing I would like to, to point out is uh, the mobile app that was developed at, after that, uh, that element. And that was uh, something which was developed uh, by uh, the Red Cross in, uh, in Australia. And that's a mobile app which is called I'm Safe. That means that people can, uh, using the app uh, at that time, and mention them to a central database that I'm safe. So any families related to that can see and go into the website and see if their family in that affected area is safe. That's something which has the Red Cross has developed and which is easy uh, to use and implement that in your own structure as well, uh, as more and more, of course, people have uh, smartphones with all kinds of multiple apps uh, on it. Early stage proactive claims management, of course, is key to reduce time and cost and to save lives. So um, the industry needs to be prepared. It is not a question if, but when. And again, the solution is be prepared and work together. Thank you. <laughs>